Hi there. My name is Doug, and today we're going to take a look at using Zoom for your own personal sake to try and get in contact with people during tough times. What I've got open right here is actually the Zoom website. You can see on the website, we can do a few different things. We're going to talk all the way through getting not only set up for an account, but making sure that you've got everything you need to actually get visually in contact with whoever it is you're trying to talk to. You can see here on the Zoom website, you've actually got uh, a sign up for absolutely free. That free website sign up, you can use a work email or address from there. Uh, you can set up things like a Facebook uh, login via Google Chrome uh, or just a Gmail account uh, and a few different options from there. Once you've actually signed in, we're going to head to a screen. Uh, and this is actually a screen capture taken from the Zoom app. So you can both use the app or the website to use Zoom in a bunch of different ways. So we're gonna talk a little bit and I'll let you know which windows are which, uh, but in here right now, what we've actually got is the sign-in window from the app. Uh, the sign-in window from the web page is gonna look pretty similar uh, to the actual sign up page. Just make sure you're taking a look and seeing that it says sign in, not sign up again. So once you've signed in, you're going to put in an email and a password. You can see that this will let you sign in with whatever uh, way that you may have signed up on the website. So you could sign in with that same Google, Facebook, things like that. You can actually see down here in the corner, there actually is a sign up free option from the app. So if you don't have an account, you can download the app and get directed to that web page. Once you're that far in, we're back on the website now. The website's going to show you something like this when you log in, and this is your profile. You can see I've got some stuff blocked out here for my own safety, but it's going to say things like your name. Uh, it'll show your uh, meeting IDs, your sign-in emails, stuff like that. Down the side here, it is also going to show a few different things, things like your meetings, your webinars. If you're recording in Zoom, which is what we're doing here, that recording is going to go right into that little tab on the side, and you've got some managements and things like that. Switching back over to the app here, and I think most of what we talk about is going to be the app. The app gives you this little window once you've signed in. You can see you've got four big buttons there to the left. You've got a new meeting button. You've got a join button, a schedule, and a share screen. 90% of the time, what you're really going to be wanting is that new meeting button or that join button. That means that either you are starting a meeting that others will join or somebody else has started a meeting that you want to join. Once you've actually joined the session, and a lot of times it's going to be just clicking uh, whichever of those buttons you're trying to use and clicking um, any information that you need, the join information, things like that. And it's going to ask you with this little pop-up window, how do you want to connect your audio? So you're always going to have audio in Zoom. You may not always have things like a webcam, but you can always talk to somebody like a virtual telephone. Uh, so most of the time, you're going to be able to join with your computer your audio, as long as that computer has something like a microphone or things like that, that'll actually let somebody hear you. Uh, so you can see you've got an automatically join uh, with the audio, and that would be if you know you're going to keep using this computer, you could click that and it'll, it'll stop asking you this question. Myself personally, I've used things like uh, video gaming headsets. Uh, you can hook up various types of microphones, webcams, and things like that to start doing things like computer audio, phone audio, so on and so forth. Coming over, once you're actually loaded, you're going to get this little toolbar. This toolbar is going to run at the bottom of your screen. So right about here on your screen, uh, you're going to see that little toolbar when you bring your mouse over it. It's got things like muting your audio, stopping your video. There are some security options. The nice thing is it tells you how many participants you have. So if you're waiting for somebody to join and you think they may have, but they're not entirely sure, you can double check down in that participants tab to see whether or not it is that they're actually connected with you. That'll go up. You know, my example here only has one, which is myself, but we've got various numbers of ways of people to join and you can go on a free account up to a hundred people in one phone call. So that's really, really nice. You do have a text chat option. You can pull that up and type just like you would any other messenger app or things like that. 
You have that share screen option again. And as a matter of fact, that's actually what I'm doing to make this video. I've shared a small amount of my screen over to you. And you can see, I still have my little webcam uh, up here in the corner, but you're seeing the rest of my screen that I've decided to share. The nice thing about share screen is you get to actually pick which screen they can see. So if you've got a couple of extra things open, you don't have to worry about sharing too much. You can just show them the window you want. There is the record option if you're going to take a video through uh, Zoom and try and, you know, post it for later or uh, do things like that. That button is there. It, it has a few different options with it. From there, the breakout rooms, the reaction rooms, those are a little bit more complicated. They're not the normal. You can set up things um, during, you know, if you were to use this for a schooling uh, aspect, you can set those up to actually separate people and move them into little groups and uh, let them work alone before coming back to the main call. And the reaction is just going to kind of act like an emoji sort of tab uh, and let you throw some, some little things in there. You do have the end button over in the end. So when you're actually done with your Zoom call, you can go ahead and just click that little end button. And it's going to probably prompt you with a, a window that says end for you or end for everyone, especially if you're the one hosting the event. We're going to keep going here. You can see there is actually a participants tab when you click on that participants button. So this will actually give you a list of the names of people that are in here. You can see I'm in here as, my, as myself uh, hosting this event. You also have the invite buttons and the mute all button. So mute all is going to be nice if you are going to, let's say, be a teacher talking to a group. You can go ahead and actually just mute everyone else in the class, unmute yourself, and then talk over, you know, everybody without having to worry about all that jumbled audio. The invite tab itself is actually going to pop up a little window like this, which is really, really nice. You get a couple ways to do this. First and foremost, you get three buttons across the middle. You've got just a sort of default email. You can send a specific Gmail or a specific Yahoo mail uh, invitation straight to whoever it is you're looking to send to. There is a contacts tab over here, but this will be related to the contacts that you've loaded to your Zoom account. So if you don't have any of those loaded, it's going to be really, really blank until you've either loaded somebody in or, or gone from there. The other nice thing you've got is two buttons at the bottom corner. So you've actually got this copy invite link and this copy invitation. So these are going to be a couple different ways. If you use some sort of instant messenger or you want to just text somebody this information, you can copy these links, copy them into your phone, copy them into that, that messenger app and just send it straight to them without having to worry about waiting for an email to go through or do anything that way. Once they're connected, they're going to be able to see everything that you've shared via your screen or your webcam, and they're going to be able to start listening and talking if they have the appropriate technology as well. Last thing we're going to do, one of the things you can set up is a meeting. So this is a very specific timed uh, Zoom call that is going to happen at, you know, a specific date and time. So you can set this up and not only can you set them up yourself, you can be sent that invitation and this tab will actually hold it in there for you if they sent the information to you. So you can take a look at, oh, on Thursday, I have an appointment uh, to be in a Zoom call at two o'clock with a few other people. That lets everybody get sort of up into the same time, gives everybody a chance to get ready and then go from there. Once you're in the Zoom call, pretty much what you can see over in my screen is what they're going to see. As long as you've got that webcam or uh, and some sort of audio recording device, they're going to be able to see and talk to you and vice versa. If they've got that technology as well, you can do it then. So it's really nice uh, if you're looking to try and get in contact with somebody, but they can't come out of their house or their uh various different situations that you need to or would want to talk to somebody, you can try and get them set up with just a little laptop or something basic like that. A lot of little tablets are going to have enough power for webcams and audio here to get them set up to a very simple way to just connect in that Zoom call, be able to see each other. You know, it may not be in person, but at least you're going to be able to see each other in that camera and talk to them in real time. Like I said, my name is Doug, and we really like using Zoom. It's what we've been recording some of our little classes in. So if you do have any questions, you can give us a call up in the Spark Place during any of our open hours, and we would love to answer some of those questions. Thank you very much for listening to my video, and I hope you have a great day.